No, this is not a toy. It looks like it could be a toy, but it's not a toy. This is Nesmix Hatchet. And now we're gonna take a look at it, talk about its history. I'm gonna show you how well it performs on various tests. Let's take a look. Hi, thank you for joining me today on my channel as we take a look at Nesmix Hatchet. Now, real quick, I wanna say thank you to my patrons on Patreon. Uh, I know Jennifer just joined us recently and I haven't given her recognition. So Jennifer, I really appreciate you uh, supporting this channel. Uh, it really means a lot to me. For all of my patrons who are supporting and helping this channel grow and go in the direction that it's going. Um, so, Nesmix Hatchet. This little thing here has a lot of stories about it in outdoor magazines. It's referenced by bush crafters and, and historical camp crafters alike. Even Horace Kephart, who I admire greatly for his knowledge, was a student of Nesmic. Now, when I picked this up from Lockhart Ironworks, Mr. Lockhart and I had a little bit of a laugh because, you know, with both Kephart's hatchet and the, this one, they're small and they're small for a purpose because they were camp crafters. They, they went on long hikes and long journeys. Now, Nesmic especially, he was a sickly little dude. He was five foot something. And uh, he had a lot of illnesses that he was dealing with and he needed lightweight gear. He even made his own lightweight canoe to trek around in the northern waters. So a guy really took his lightweight, ultralight backpacking very seriously. And we've got this little thing here. Now, the thing of it is, as much as I strive for historical accuracy, along with Mr. Lockhart, who I appreciate because of his keen eye to detail, no one knows about how much weight or the real accurate size of Nesmix hatchet. At least nothing's been out there for now. Now, Horace Kephart, he did a drawing and a sketch of what Nesmix hatchet would have looked like, uh, but but there's no definitive answer on whether or not Horace Kepar even got to see the original hatchet, the original knives. So this one's based off of the picture. And you're maybe wondering, well, what picture and, and all that? Well, Nesmic's hatchet was shown side by side with his pocket knife. Now, Nesmic, he preferred a moose pattern pocket knife. So that's what I have here. And side by side, that's about the size of the hatchet would have been. And then, to figure out the handle, well, it was about three times the size of the, uh, the width and about four times the size of the head. So that's how we came up with the handle length. Now the handle itself is hickory. The steel is, if I remember right, uh, just about 16 ounces so it's almost one pound it's like 15.5 ounces for the head in case you're keeping track now mr nesmick he knew that he wanted one side for chopping and one side for splitting and of course cleaving bone because he was a hunter now that's pretty nice because you don't want a chipped end when you're trying to chop something or vice versa when you're trying to split something so Having a double bit axe is really useful keeping those things in mind. Now, let's take a look up close on the dimensions. So there, you see how thick each end really is. The so Nesmix axe was made by a surgical tool maker that he found himself. And in his book, if you read it, which you can find on my website, www.honorableoutfitters.com, he talks about how he was made fun of by his fellow campers because of his diminutive size, but they all supposedly humbled themselves when he showed them how it was used. And I have to admit that I was kind of the same way. When I saw this thing, I kind of uh, laughed quite a bit, but you can't argue with its performance for the size of it is. And a lot of that has to do with the weight of the head itself. Now, in comparison to Kephart's hatchet, which relies on the length of the handle to get momentum going for it to really be useful, Nesmix hatchet is shorter 
but relies on its stout head. So let's see how it performs because that's what we're here for. If you've liked this video, please click like. That way other people find it, it helps them out as well. You'll be doing them a big favor. Okay, so this wood is ash and we're going to be using the splitting side instead of the chopping side. Not too shabby. Let's see how it does with the chopping side in comparison to the splitting side. Now, of course, there's some inherent danger whenever you're using a two-sided hatchet or ax. So in case you're watching this, never go straight up and down, go side to side. Make sure you have your blood circle completely uh, open. So if you do overshoot it, you're not gonna take off something that's important. Let's try the splitting side one more time. It, it does a good job of getting in there. All right, so we're gonna stop while we're ahead. Now let's take a look at how well it chops. It does all right for what it needs to do. It makes pretty quick work of it all for the size of the hatchet that it is. There you go. The Kephart Hatchet in its full glory. Now there's other makers who make this one, but I got to give some credit to Mr. Lockhart because I think he did a fantastic job for this little hatchet, especially for its size. There's a lot of makers out there who I think make them just a little too big and the shape doesn't really match what Nesmic had shown in his drawing. I think Lockhart nailed it with this one. Now if you're interested in a Nesmic yourself or a Kephart, Mr. Lockhart, made one extra of each. He says he really doesn't want to make these smaller ones. He's wanting to get into the larger forest axes. But uh, I do have, as of videotaping this, one extra each of the Nesmic and the Kephar. And you can look in the description below if it says that uh, it's still available, it's still available. Otherwise I'll change it and it says that it is no longer available. You can also reach out to Mr. Lockhart of Lockhart Ironworks and uh, see if he'll make you one as well. They do cost $200. And for a master blacksmith's custom made item, that's not a bad price at all. It's very fair. Like I said, uh, Mr. Lockhart, he's got one heck of a resume. You can't beat it uh, from such a master craftsman. If you wanna see more historical artifacts, it's really cool, then you wanna check out this video here. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Give a kiss, hug to your loved ones, and I'll catch you guys next time. Take care.